Most of our research was done in the waters because it makes up 70% of the planet's surface. The first chosen experiment was to determine the curvature of the horizon at water level. Let's record one of the main tests on the sphericity of the Earth. And this test with the respect to the masts of the ships, the distance that it is away from the coast, precisely to know if there is sphericity, if there is angulation in the Earth. The lower the humidity in the air, the further we can see. And the higher the humidity, the more distortions occur in our view. So the places to be chosen to do the tests have to be of very low humidity. The tests will prove that if the Earth is spherical, the waters will follow the curvature. The first site chosen to start the experiments was Lagoa dos Patos in Rio Grande do Sul. We are in Lagoa dos Patos. And there is a team they are mounting a telescope with a great capacity of visualization and must follow the two boats that we will see in sequence. This image should also be registered by the cameras that are installed on the edge of the beach. We start from now on this new phase of the research intending to travel a distance of about 40 kilometers over the lagoon, trying to show people there is a strait in this lagoon. That is, there is a flatness. And this is an objective today. One of the objectives that we will try to show, this flatness of the waters that puts in question the issue of the curvature of the globe. And the function of the ground crew is trying to perceive this displacement, to map and to generate a visual image of it. The researchers mounted a Newtonian telescope specially designed for the experiment with a high-definition camera attached to its eyepiece to register the entire process. The teams used high-tech positioning equipment to ensure the accuracy of the results. This same experiment was carried out in other places. One of them was in the Strait of Gibraltar in France. We are here in the south of France, a seaside town called Le Bagarre. We set out together with the French researchers, coordinators of an association called Project Energy Action here in France, trying to prove the veracity of this seemingly absurd theory. I had the opportunity to participate in the phase of the tests that were held in Europe. It would be the filming of a boat, as far as possible from the coast. We find it very interesting the chance to be able to touch on a controversial subject and to be part of these experiences, to demonstrate something that science does not accept today. It would be filmed through a telescope. We also use the camera attached to its lens so we could film the experiment effectively. This experiment was also carried out in Brazil at the Tres Marias Dam in Minas Gerais.
And another team carried out the same experiment on the beach of Santos, on the coast of Sao Paulo. There we divided the teams in two. One stayed on the shore and the other went on a boat out at sea. We brought a Newtonian telescope. We were also using a total station. We are recording you here. Is that so? We're zooming in on you. Back in the experiment with the boats, the researchers observed that after some time following the boats with the naked eye, they began to disappear on the horizon. First, the hull. Soon after, the boat was no longer visible. And finally, the mast goes down until it disappears completely, as the spherical Earth theory explains. When the boats reached a certain distance, it was no longer possible to see them with the naked eye. So does this mean that the Earth is really spherical? To what conclusion did the researchers arrive in relation to the experiments with ships? The researchers realized that after some time looking at the boats with the naked eye, they began to disappear on the horizon. First the hull, then it was no longer possible to see the boat, and finally the mast lowered until it disappeared completely, as the spherical Earth theory explains. Watching the boats with the naked eye, the initial impression is that they were disappearing, as if descending behind the horizon line. When the boats reached a certain distance, it was no longer possible to see them with the naked eye. For a moment, we were a little frustrated to be in the place to prove the sphericity of the air, as with a naked eye, we could easily come to that conclusion. Does this mean that the Earth is even spherical? With the loss of eye contact, it's time for the team to use optical instruments in an attempt to still see the boats. If the boats are still visible through the equipment, it's proof that they have not traveled below the horizon. And to everyone's surprise, the boats were still there, visible. The researchers realized that the images of the equipment presented some optical phenomena. During the experiments, we perceived the formation of optical phenomena that we initially attribute to the Fata Morgana effect, which is the refraction of light in the layers of the atmosphere. This phenomenon is very common in deserts. There are the famous mirages. The mirage is the Fata Morgana effect. A formation of images occurs, virtual images, images that are not real at specific points. Through the observations and the collected data during the experiments, we were able to determine that the optical phenomena had a certain pattern. After some distance, we began to have a visual loss. 
which increased to a distance where our direct vision was compromised. When we lost the view with the naked eye, we used optical equipment, in this case the telescope, and the boat was still there. Only we realized that it was an inverted image, a mirror image. We realized that the real image was practically disappearing, and we had the formation of an inverted virtual image, an inverted mirror image, when the angle of incidence of light on the surface, in this case water, tended to zero. This occurs because of the mirroring effect where the reflection of the image occurs. This phenomenon we recorded for the first time in Lagos dos Patos in Rio Grande do Sul. During the research, we sensed that each state of experiments was complementing the other. With the unfolding of the experiments, we perceived that the optical instruments amplified the visual phenomena. In the case of the use of Newtonian telescopes, in which its optics, which is of extreme precision, amplifies thousands of times the capacity of the human eye, could see things that we did not see. This led to amplifying the visual phenomena we observed during the execution of the experiments. We deepened the studies, and we could determine that most optical phenomena which are attributed to the refraction of light, called Fata Morgana effect, actually occurs by reflection. It is a reflective process of light on a surface with an angle tending to zero. With the observations we make, we have been able to promote a new physical theory that explains the Fata Morgana effect from a new optic, a new point of view. We call it the theory of optics applied to visual phenomena. This conclusion helped us explain three phenomena that we know are illusions. Why the boat seems to disappear going down the horizon line, why first fades the hull and then the boat, and why when an observer is taller can see farther. We conclude then that boats don't descend at the horizon and that we lose the ability to observe them, to see them in function of an optical phenomenon. With this experiment, one of the main arguments of the spherical Earth theory, that boats disappear on the horizon due to the curvature, is totally refuted. This is the first proof of the flatness of the waters.